Just when I get around to reviewing this cartoon, this episode one pilot, DC announces it's going to be an animated movie instead of a 12 episode series. And I honestly have no idea how to feel about that. Regardless, in the title of this video, I will be putting episode one because that's what this originally was. And maybe I'll review the full movie. I'm not really sure yet. So, let's get it started. The episode begins with Slade talking to his wife, Adeline. And, well, there's a little bit of exposition here or there. This is supposed to be a new show, after all. She's worried about him, and Slade bounces back, saying that Cambodia was years ago, and that they weren't even married. But they were engaged, and it cuts to a scene of Slade having sex with a very voluptuous, uh, Cambodian woman. And I can't show the full thing here because they, they're completely naked. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I really like the scene's uh, use of playing with color. You know, I don't really see a lot of animated shows doing that. Where they just play around with the color of certain scenes. And, you know, they got the red as like the entirety of the background. You got a slate and the woman being obscured by grays. And then when it cuts to him confessing his sin, then you've got, like, everything overwashed by blue, and then Slade and Adeline being shaded with a red, and, you know, I really like this. Like, that that's very much creativity at its finest. As it's uh, showing the emotional spectrum of, uh, you know, passion and then anger and sadness. It's just really good visual storytelling. And their call is interrupted by their son, Joseph, who wants Slade to read him a story. And this is where the thumbnail for this video comes into play here. I did say best reasoning for a title ever, and the book Slade's son, Joseph, gets him to read is none other than Knights and Dragons. It's more like the book, at least to me, represents the more idealistic version that a child like Joseph has on the world a knight saving people from the big bad monsters of the world, and that's all there is to it. But, unfortunately, the real world is a lot more complicated than that. Especially not for Slade Wilson. But before getting into the whole blood and gore of Deathstroke Knights and Dragons, the banter between Adeline and Joseph is really nice, as Adeline uses language like commanding officer, and soldier to her son. She might have left the military, but the military doesn't quite leave you. And it then cuts to Slade, and he puts the book down, and he goes off into the real world, away from the idealistic version of knights and dragons. He goes to this compound, and I really like the background here. It looks almost like straight out of a comic book. You get this awesome action sequence where Deathstroke, he breaks in, he punches, kills some guys, even, like, goes on a zip line almost, <laughs> and shoots at everybody who's shooting at him, yada yada, and it's just really, really cool. It then cuts to Adeline tucking in Joseph for bed, and then she walks outside of his room. It's nice, it's happy, and then she gets yeeted into a wall by this guy who calls himself the Jackal. He tells Adeline that he wants her son. And Adeline here actually puts up a pretty decent fight after being yeeted into the wall. Though dear Jackal has a backup plan. Shocking her, in turn stunning her as she falls to the floor. He flips her around and then steps on her ankle to break it. And there was this really realistic bone snap sound that just made me flinch. Jackal does some exposition disguised as smack talking, telling Adeline that, uh, if you didn't raise your son, be a wife and mother, then hey, maybe you could have beaten me. Even though he was the one who shocked her, so 
I guess Jackal really, really wanted to rub it in. It then tragically cuts to the rest of Slade's mission, which turns out to be the teaser trailer that I covered a while back on this channel that was released for Nice and Dragons. Since I already covered the teaser trailer, I won't be going over it again in this video. All I will say is, is that, well, teaser's pretty good, and here, in the whole grand scheme of episode one, it does make sense as to why it's in episode one, which is good. Before getting to see Adeline and Joseph's fates, first it's origin story time, as after the mission, Slade picks out bullets from his still healing body, talking to a man named Wintergreen. I'm guessing a code name because that is the exact name of a kind of chewing tobacco. Wintergreen asks Slade, well, what will happen to Adeline and Joseph if he doesn't come back? And Slade just dodges the question, asking for transport. Well, then it's origin story time. Cutting to Slade gasping for air with uh, doctors and nurses surrounding him with the uh, bright lighting and including a red background. Again, loving the use of playing around with colors and flashbacks and with size and emission of their failure, it all fades to black into a hospital room. Adeline is there and she's yelling at Slade for volunteering for that damn drug trial, saying it could have killed him. With Slade just saying, well, I've always been a good soldier and they needed me, so I took it. They have a bit of back and forth with Adeline wanting to go with Slade because, well, he needs her, but Slade says, you know what, you gotta finish your service. You got 14 months left. Go do it. Slade also wants to build a life for himself to try and live on his own. And, well, he asks Adeline, well, if you still want me, well, giggity. That is the summarized version of this exchange brought to you by Riot Kitty. However, the most important point of this conversation is how Slade says, well, the army is the only life he's ever known, and... He's only known following orders, killing the enemy. And Adeline says, well, you're so much more than that. And he responds, I hope so. Which is kind of interesting because just got done with the scene of him uh, assaulting a military compound and killing a lot of people. So obviously Slade feels quite a bit differently than he did in his younger years. And then, well, it cuts to Slade waking up in a daze, and then he goes to the bathroom. Veins are kind of like popping out of his skin. It, it just looks really painful, and then he lets out a loud scream. So obviously that drug trial definitely didn't fail. And with that pain-induced scream, the credits roll for this TV show turned movie. And well, as I'm recording this, I realize that the movie is actually out now. Huh. So anyways, Slade comes home and he immediately notices something's off and wrong, and well, he finds Adeline upstairs, beaten, a lot of bruises, room's trashed, and well, she tells Slade that the jackal took Joseph, and he asks, who is that? But she slaps him and screams at him about being a liar and lying all this time. This is where I think the voice actor for Slade shines a little bit better than the voice actress for Adeline. As, well, it sounds like she's not really playing with the voice at all while Slade keeps going up and down in his pitch and his tone of voice. But she's just using her bass voice to scream and it almost sounds like the actress is getting hoarse when she's yelling at him even though she hasn't yelled for very long. So I'm thinking here that either the voice actors needed to play with her voice a little bit more or the line needed to be changed so she didn't get so hoarse. By and by it seems like parts of the conversations he had with Slade is recorded separately because she sounds hoarse in one line and then the next line normal voice again where she does not sound hoarse. Just a nitpick, though. Anyways, Adeline goes on, you know, you're a liar and stuff like that, and that she knows everything now because the jackal told her. And, well, she asks why. Why would he keep this from her? But Slade does not answer a question and lowers his voice to, like, the Deathstroke voice, basically. 
And he's like, oh, I'm bringing his carcass back. And our son. And then Slade leaves, following the jackal's instructions to find him. And well, can I just say this? DC Animation rebooting their whole cinematic universe. Whoever the heck is doing these backgrounds, DC, hire this person. It looks straight out of a comic book. I love it. I love it so much. Anyways, Jackal is like, well, you gotta join us, Slade. And Slade's like, I already turned you down once. And Jackal says, well, he respects that. Unfortunately, his boss doesn't. So Jackal doesn't really like that Slade acts like he's Got the higher moral authority here. She isn't to not work for Hive. So he's still going to do what his boss tells him. Which makes for a slightly more interesting villain henchman. So Jackal sends some sub henchmen to fight him. And well, Destro deals pretty big blows to both of them. Killing the girl. And then, well, he's like, okay, that's enough. Here's your kid. But he's got a knife to his throat. So, join us, or the kid gets it. And Deathstroke does this really gruesome maneuver, because he had his one of his swords directly into this guy Bronze Tiger's arm, and so then he slices out his sword, and then he just chops his arm clean off. I'm just like, oh my gosh. That's like straight from Rambo almost. <laughs> then he just charges straight at the hive guy and breaks the glass, but unfortunately, Slade was not quick enough as the guy already got Joseph. And, well, oof. Definitely a lot of blood. A lot, a lot of blood. And in cool guy fashion, Slade gets his son out of there, but blows up the entire compound in a fiery ablaze. And in the background of said ablaze, Bronze Tiger and Jackal get away. Although not entirely in one piece. And neither did Joseph, having his throat cut and lying in a hospital bed unconscious. Now, this entire next segment is narrated by Slade to Joseph, saying that, well, his mom thinks he should go away for a while, and he thinks so as well. And definitely hammering home that theme of what is actually reality versus a childlike version of reality, where Slade tells Joseph that he's a knight, like the stories they read. But Joseph saw something kind of entirely different. And he goes all red-eyed on a drawing he made of a knight. So the kid's got superpowers. And it also shows Adeline. And she cut her hair. I, I don't like it all that much just because of the character design. You know, sharp chins and stuff. So it makes her chin look very jetted out. And it doesn't really look as good as when her hair's just curled around her face. Then BAM! 10 years later title card, so it's obviously been a while. And wow is the atmosphere depressing with a bloodied and battered Slade taking off his Deathstroke armor and just collapsing on the, the bed of a messy hotel room. Slade's rest is interrupted by a woman calling him. And she does this uh, horror movie type deal where she um, projects herself onto all the screens in his room Kinda cool. And she does this uh, flickering TV thing. It appears on the screen. Immediately thought of Danganronpa with that. And they kind of have a, a little bit too drawn out conversation. Which the point of it is she's contacting him to tell him that she doesn't want to recruit him anymore because she's got his son. So the only thing Slade can do at that point is to contact his wife. And Slade has some rather harsh words for his wife saying that she should not have left him alone up there, isolated in the mountains. And in Slade's defense, while well, Adeline jides back that he left them alone too, that school totally does not look like it's a secure location, with a bunch of security cameras and stuff like that. Hmm. So it really is both their faults that Joseph got kidnapped again. He tells her that he will get their son back no matter what. And Adeline gives him a kiss of good luck as he sets Slade off. Slade goes to Kaznia and obviously goes there to interrogate an old buddy, Bronze Tiger, 
and with an impressive feat of strength and accuracy, picks up a rocket launcher with one hand and blows up two helicopters with one shot. Destro claps for his feet and asks, well, where's the Hive Queen? Because you're the only guy I haven't killed that's a part of Hive. Unfortunately, Bronze Tiger isn't willing to cooperate and it all culminates in an extremely short fight where Destro wins the exact same way he won all those years ago by cutting Bronze Tiger's arm off. The exact same arm, which was pretty funny to me in a darkly comedic sort of manner. Bronze Tiger concedes and tells him a location he thinks where Hive might be to get him off his butt, and Slate heads there along with Wintergreen. And after a short underwater trip, Slate arrives on the beaches of this island and comes face to face with Lady Shiva. Although, wow, I do not like her hair. Why does it look like a helmet? In that regard, the New 52 definitely did her a lot better. Anyway, Slade decides to not go full Rambo and uncharacteristically surrenders himself to Lady Shiva, who brings him to the Hive Queen, who's sitting on top of her throne and looking all mysterious with the glowing lights everywhere. The Hive Queen tells Slade that he's smart for surrendering himself and not fighting through the fortress. So I guess it's a little bit of growth on Slade's part not immediately going to fight, and instead tries to scope out the situation. Hive Queen takes off her mask and reveals Slade's face as well, and she really doesn't look any older than 18. Slade's plan impressed her so much that she decides to show him what the Hive is planning, and takes him to where his son is being held, which looks kind of like a medical bay ward combined with the Mission Impossible room. She tells Slade that, well, we're gonna use your kid because he's got awesome superpowers to scare the world into submission so that there's only war when they allow it. However, Slade does not like the proposition of his kid being used as a super weapon. So he and Joseph bust out of there together and run with hive agents on their tail. They reach a kind of docking bay for ships or whatever, and Joseph uses his telepath powers to close the door behind him. Deathstroke tries to call up Wintergreen to come pick them up, but Joseph rejects, saying that, well, why would I betray my own sister? And he cuts off communication. Slade is understandably confused, and he's like, wait, what are you talking about? But then Joseph E.T. taps him and shows him the scene of him having sex with that Cambodian woman that was mentioned at the beginning of the episode. I realized who the Hive Queen actually was, and it hit me like a truck. Oh, this is Rose Wilson from Teen Titans Go, which is the only thing I can recall Rose being in, so it's good she's being used more. We need more children of superheroes and villains and such. Not counting Young Justice, of course, but that was a good step in the right direction. Joseph decides to be the ultimate asshole, and basically he opens the door to find Hive agents pointing guns at them, and Joseph joins their side. Because, for obvious reasons, he's not too happy with his parents and thinks, well, I'll just join my sister instead because obviously they don't care about me. The Hive agents behind Lady Shiva and Joseph start firing, and Slade takes like 30 rounds of bullets, I'm pretty sure. He's not looking good here. Slade weakly calls out his son's name as Lady Shiva walks up to him and then lightly flicks him on the forehead, sending him down into the watery depths below. The Hive posse all goes back inside, but Joseph, looking back, sort of feeling remorseful for condemning his father to a shooting gallery. With the Hive hanger doors cutting out, that is where the episode ends, which is quite the cliffhanger especially for a show that's been partially canceled and turned into a movie. So while I'm still worried about Deathstroke Knights and Dragons the movie, I will still review the movie because might as well go full circle and review the entirety of Knights and Dragons on my channel. Thank you to everyone sticking by till the end of the video. I'd love to know your thoughts on Deathstroke Knights and Dragons episode one in the comments section below. Riot Kitty is signing out.